Hello YouTube buds. Good to see you again. I finished finally my clownfish and seahorse painting and I'm going to show you that, talk about it a little bit, and as well as the photographs on the computer of the original reference photos. So let's take a look starting with the artwork. And here it is all finished. I was seeing in this seahorse a lot of circular shapes. If you go in closely, you will see a bunch of the circles. And the primary color here is purple, uh, mixed in with a lot of white. So you put a light coating of purple only since it's such a dark color anyway in my set. And then a lot of white on top and you're able to get the lavender color that way. This section is all magenta. And that color looks real nice. It bounces off in front of these other colors behind it. So does the bright orange too. Kind of has a bouncy feel. That gives it some depth. I'll talk about depth a little bit today. There are circular bubbles. More on this one than in the other samples I saw. I'm not sure exactly what that's about. They have little pointy protrusions along their surface. But this one I picked did not have really much of that going on in this area, just along the curve of the back and along the tail. I saved some space to make those. You can't make them on top of this dark color, which is green, a green. You have to save your space to make things like that because you just can't put a light color over dark on colored pencil. The fish, uh, in terms of depth, you can get a sense from a couple things. One is the background, which is like live coral. And I don't even know if that's a plant purely or a fish or a uh, animal, what coral is, or maybe there's f probably forms of both, but I'm only guessing on that. You can always let me know if you know these things. I'd love to read your comments. But having some go in front of the fish and then the fish and some behind automatically turns your brain on into depth. So you have plants in front of plants, parts in front of other parts. All of that work, that it can be done in the background, but also in the background. Um, these two are obviously in front of all plants. I wanted a clear view of them. So you get the sense of front and back, but what really adds the depth is this fish here. You need some middle areas, darker areas, knee shapes, and then lighter areas. So you need all three to help create three-dimensional viewing and depth. Um, spacing out to make sure you have uh, certain dark areas throughout, even if small, but then taking turns, having them throughout really adds to depth. Also being attention of those shapes as negative shapes. They're, they're areas of darkness. And so you have to decide in advance with colored pencil how large of an area of darkness do I want or at least decide as you're doing it but you really kind of have to do a lot of that decision in the beginning where do I want some maybe thin shapes uh, sp sporadic shapes and then you can spontaneously decide to start saving them and blocking them in knowing you're not going to put white over them if you've made your final decision on that shadows also add depth Shadow on the fish will also create 3D. Notice that this red is only on the bottom of the fish because this red is darker than the orange. Red is darker than the orange. Even though it's subtle, it's definitely darker. And I have it underneath on the bottom of the fish. I chose not to put any red on the top except maybe a tiny bit, which would create like, this is like a mini shadow starting the fin. Even on the seahorse, you can see this area where I created this shape here look 3D. Why? Because, or what achieves that? The shadow underneath. So you know this is like a curvy part of the body and then below attaches a tail that goes into a shape like that. All right, let's take a look at the uh, several reference photos I used. Well, I've got the seahorse open. Let's start with him. And there's two in this picture. These I used for color ideas, and this one also does not have as many of those protrusions along the side, though there are some, not just the ridge of the back. And there are some, even in the smaller one, which is probably a youngster, maybe, 
going down the back, but there's some pointiness here that you're not getting as much of that circular shape. This one has the circular shapes. And you can see a circle, an oblong too, but I'm calling them circles, oblong shapes. Circles, circle, circle, circle. These are just very tiny versions of these pointy things, like a little dot almost. So I put some dots on mine. I believe seahorse are considered a fish. I don't think they would float up and breathe air, um, but I do not know where the gills are. Maybe they're behind the head somewhere. The eyeball is not as obvious in this one. So when you look at mine, you can go back and see, look at a still version of that. You'll see that I, I exaggerated the eyes circles to keep, which it is, there's a circular shape here. But mine is much more obvious in the color pattern I chose for more stylistic circles to match the circles going on in the body. That's the most clear example of where I went off photorealism a bit. So instead of drawing what I was seeing, I changed it to what I wanted to see. And that is fine if you want to do that, if you're not showing the reference photo. These are all um, free image use from Pixabay or unsplash. Let's take a look at another one. There you can see a reddish and orange seahorse. The eye is much more obvious, or the part that becomes the eye. This is like the part holding the eye in the dead center of that. This one has much more obvious protrusions along the side, whereas mine did not. So there appears to be some variety with that going on. And I like how his tail is grabbing and he's holding onto a plant here to stabilize himself. Now I didn't use this photo, but this is where I got the color idea from. So I used a different photo for the shapes of the plants, but I changed it quite a bit. But I used generally this color theme. You can also get a different view of the fish if you change your mind, you wanna put in a third fish, what you're doing. It's like, well, maybe I'll get one facing me. I played with that, but it's, it's looked too much like here I am, look at me only when I had it in this view. So I'm like, no, don't put in a third fish doing that. There's the uh, idea of the fish being surrounded partially by the plant. This is the one where I also use the shapes in the background of how the plants will generally look going side to side almost here being uh, with the different water currents. And here you see the photographic effect of having the closest plants, like you could have a leaf of a tree in front of you as you're shooting stuff in the distance. I chose to take that out and just have a hint of it where this right side, they are more blurry like these ones. And then they're more solid behind that section. So I only kept that idea in a very tiny section on my right side here. The patterns of the uh, clownfish change quite a bit from fish to fish. And so I definitely went off photorealism there and I, I kept this one. And then for the other shapes on this fish, and I had less blocking going on to see the fish. I put a different shape. This might be part of the white coming from beneath him and then the fin begins. So this part is hard to figure out what's going on with him. I tried to clarify that a little bit too. I hope you enjoyed that. It's just a little chatty video, I know, but I wanted to get that up and to show my finished one here and I'll keep going with what I need to do to get prints ready for it and all those fun steps. I did enjoy doing this one. It was my first seascape, really, underwater oceanscape, I'm calling it too. All right, you take care. I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.